hey guys, we want to put out a message. And uh, we were just talking to our kids about this. So I thought, gosh, this is what everybody needs to really know. And it's accessing, you have access to a higher power, which is God within. And uh, in Hebrew, it's called the lev. It's the rod of the the rod within, the thing that casts seeds within, which is identified as your heart. And uh, so it's access, you have access to this higher power to do things you never thought possible in the power of God, faster than you ever thought possible, that your dreams really can come true. And so <clears throat> anyway, I wanted to show you a couple things um, just really about this power of God. I'm going to, uh, if you've never done this, I'd encourage you to watch Steve Jobs' graduation address at Stanford. And, uh, you know, some of you guys know his story. He dropped out of college because <laughs> it didn't interest him because he was following his heart. The one thing he wanted, he took a calligraphy class because he thought it was fascinating, which is why you have fonts um, today, because in Apple, you can have all these fonts. And he was he was interested in how things looked and how it felt. And it's, it's really interesting also um, that uh, at his death, he gave uh, everybody the autobiography of a yogi. And so I've shared a little bit of things out that where the yogis, what they would say is when you have a thought, you are literally taking the photons, the energy packets of God that every, all matter is created out of and, and uh, reforming that into matter. So you're taking the, it said literally the photons, the light energy and reforming it into matter, which is exactly what we were sharing in the fellowships this weekend, like Einstein's famous equation, energy E equals MC squared. So energy e is is an equivalent of matter at the speed of light squared. And it's not exact, but the whole point is this, guys. If you want something in your physical life to change, you don't try focus on the physical thing out here. That's matter pushing matter. It's slow. It takes a long time. Um, all you need to do is change your energy level. You know, and that's what all the scriptures talk about. It says, believe you have received it. Well, if you already, let's say you were, you were praying for $100,000. Well, what would your energy level be? What would your excitement be if you already had it that different energy that different thought process would create it you know if you're praying for healing um uh uh i've been diagnosed with this please please see this with me well that, that's great but what the what the prayer team does guys is we change the energy and we see we feel the energy as if you already are whole we're not we're not going oh please god heal me or oh please god give me this money we're we're seeing ourselves already enjoying the health that has a different energy, which creates a different physical result or mass. You're seeing yourself already having that amount of money that has a different uh, energy than in the past. We see ourselves already enjoying the divine health that has a different energy. Prayer is simply laying hold of something face to face. So it's I am and then fill in the blank. It's not I need to be healed. Please see that. And uh, because that your prayer is being answered perfectly, meaning I'm not experiencing um, healing. You've laid hold of, I lack healing. So I'm not experiencing it. Your prayer is being answered perfectly. But what would your energy level be? What would your joy be? What would your peace be experiencing it? Now here, the whole key guys is really getting into alpha and theta. It's it's emphasizing the inner man within you, the, the accessing the higher power of God, which is in the unseen realm, the spiritual realm. So in that unseen realm, when you get into alpha and theta, Whatever you imagine or whatever you tell yourself, the heart readily accepts and brings it about effortlessly. Now, let me just show you a couple of things. I'm going to show you just a little clip of that Steve Jobs um, clip from Harvard. I'm going to read something else um, from, from a book that we're doing with our kids. So I thought I'm going to do this with you guys as well. So let me just show you this. And um, So this is, uh, you can go look at any of these, but I want to just show you something pretty interesting here. Your time is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Mm. To me, that is so good, guys. He says, follow your heart and intuition. What's that inner man? What's the lev, the heart? What's the guidance of you telling? So here's what I would encourage you to do, guys, is what I'm doing with my kids, actually, is um, um, I'm having them really identify what experiences do you want to experience in life? Um, <clears throat> what what financial goals do you want to have in life? Um, 
how do you want your marriage to look like? How do you want your kids to be? And really take some time to, to think about all those things and, and write them down. Formulate them on paper, actually. Not trying to figure out how to get there. That's matter trying to change matter. He says, follow your heart. You know, his. if you watch that whole story, it's, it, I find it ironic that he's uh, nothing against higher education, guys. I want to share some things with you. <laughs> I've seen a lot of very educated people that 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 can't really do much in life because they haven't learned to, to follow God within them. They haven't found the secret place. The, the kingdom of God is within. The royal rune and grain of God is within. And so it's identifying those things. And when you get yourself into alpha and theta, guys, when you calm yourself down, your heart, that rod within, that cast seeds within your heart, that return effortlessly, the seed has all the power in itself to bring it to you. It's about the two seeds can constantly all through scripture. The one of the physical intimacy where the seed is cast out of the man into the woman's womb, and you experience life. You, he's given you life. Now there's another life to life to live with within the second man, the smooth man, which which serves the physical man. And what, when you get into alpha and theta, guys, it's trusting that what you do within literally is the power of God and brings it to you in the best way for you in ways you know not how. It can't be stopped. It's effortless. It's really just taking the time to figure out what do I truly want to experience See yourself already enjoying what you want to experience and know that that's God. And so I want to read another thing to you that uh, um, as a, you know, that's the the whole, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The inner man, the, inner, the Hebrew heart is lev. It's the seed you're casting within and laying hold of, which if you already have, it has a different energy, which changes the physical mass. Energy equals mass. So it's, it's uh, you know, um, I have talked about over and over. If you look at Dispenza, he says, we teach our people to get up from meditation or prayer. You spent some time going face to face. You are already experiencing who you would like to be. You're already experiencing the health you would like to enjoy. You're already experiencing the abundance. But um, abundance is, guys. Wealth is. Joy is. Um, uh, um, everything is. And you know what? Lack is. And... Um, Lack of health is all things exist. The, the the real game of life, the journey of life is learning to to manipulate the outcome where you can go. I can see myself already enjoying this. And in ways we know not how it's like a seed in the heart. Your life starts to reflect that effortlessly. You get moved into positions. People show up in your life. Things happen. So it's not trying to figure out how you're going to do it. It's seeing yourself already enjoying it. Now, this is it came into a discussion because we were having with our kids and and uh uh, this is why I often tell you guys, like, I would like to you to experience God versus debate scripture, because I promise you all scripture is about the two lives. It's about the two men, the physical men and the spiritual man. It's about the two seeds, the seed that gives you life and the seed from within that uh, generates all by itself. And and uh, um, it's really fascinating. So anyway, some of you guys know the story. It just made me think of this again. Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. So the whole story was this is Andrew Carnegie. He was a billionaire, only had a fifth grade education, a Scotsman. And uh, when he when he met Napoleon Hill, he said, hey, you know what? Because of who he was, the, you know, one of the first billionaires ever, um, said, I can give you access to all the, you know, 500 of the, the world's most successful men. And they all have the same secret, which is where we get the, the word, the secret, which is exactly scripture, guys. There's nothing weird about it. It's the hidden place. Go into that hidden place, you know, in the narrative of Jesus, where it says, what you do within, the whole world will see without. It's that secret place. It's the uh, the place you can't see. It's it's really a fascinating thing. So I just want to read this to you, though. But the whole goal was for him to go, I want you to learn this and, and put it in a book form so you can teach people. And here's, here's what his thought was. This is This is what Carnegie said. He believed this should be taught in all public schools and colleges, actually should be taught in every church um, if they really want to do it. In fact, they're teaching things that have nothing to do with scripture. It's just a wrong interpretation of scripture. Public schools and colleges and express the opinion that if they were properly taught, it would so revolutionize the entire edu educational system that time spent in school would be reduced to less than half. Well, that's interesting, right? <clears throat> and he says, <laughs> so he says, uh, um, much of what is taught in schools is of no value whatsoever in connection with business or for earning a living or accumulating riches. It's really a fascinating thing. So he says, you can have anything you want, provided you know what you want. This is where Helen Hansel, you know, was saying the same thing about Napoleon or about uh, um, 
about uh, uh, it, her testimony that I showed you in the video. And so it says this, it says, um, when you find this, I would just call it the, the accessing the power of the man within, the accessing the higher power within. They call it, what the peculiar thing about this secret is that once you acquire it and use it, you will find yourselves literally swept on to success with but little effort, and you never again submit to failure. Why? Because the seed, the parable of parables, the seed has in it the power to go produce this life all in itself. And then he says, the secret is reserved for those who are ready for it. Education has nothing to do with it. Thomas Edison used it so intelligently, he became the world's leading inventor, although he had but three months of schooling. Well, hello. But what did he have? He, he knew that in his imagination, his quiet time, ideas would come to him. He would, he would lay down and you find that anybody's successful journals and they get ideas. And so here's where uh, uh, I'll just share a little bit more because this is exactly the same thing. He says, um, all achievement, all earned riches have their beginning in an idea or we could say a thought. And then if you go to chapter one, um, it says, thoughts are things. <clears throat> when you when they're mixed with definite purpose, persistence, and the burning desires, meaning where do you dwell? Where do you stay? Um, where do you spend all, where your thoughts all day? Where are your thoughts and emotions all day? And it says, those become things. Thoughts, the spiritual realm, emerges into the physical realm. Thoughts are things. <clears throat> you really do think and grow rich. So when you have thoughts of seeing yourself completely whole, when you have thoughts of seeing yourself completely abundant, where you realize like wealth is, just as lack is. Lack will produce as much lack as you want. Abundance will produce as much abundance as you want. We go, I am this. It's amazing that just the abundance flows freely to me easily. Everything's so easy in my life, which I'm trying to show you over and over and over. Now, here's what's interesting. So then he tells the story of this young Mr. Barnes who had no money, wanted to go work with Mr. Edison. And so he didn't have any money, et cetera. So he jumped on the train, showed up looking like a bum and uh, says, hey, I'm here to work with you. So anyway, they get to this point where it says, what young Barnes said to Mr. Edison, basically this guy who just went homeless on a train, what, <clears throat> what he said to Mr. Edison was far less important than that which he thought. And I think it's so interesting. Like when I transitioned out of the military, they were trying to like teach you how to dress and um, you know, how to prepare for a job interview, things like that. Um, that's not what he did. <laughs> he said what he said was far more important than what he thought. It couldn't have been the young man's appearance because his start, because he looked homeless is what he said. It's what he thought that counted. Now, this next sentence is where all the money comes from. It's what he thought that counted, that which he thought. If the significance of this statement can be conveyed to any person who reads it, there's no need for the remainder of this book. Did you hear that? What you think counts. <clears throat> the significance of this statement could be conveyed to every person who reads it. There would be no need for the remainder of this book. Once you get that, thoughts literally take form and become tangible things. And then in the next page, it says, any impulse of thought can be transmuted into its physical counterpart. <clears throat> More gold has been mined from the brains of men that has ever been taken from the earth. That's what I wanted to get, guys. You have access to a higher power to do things you never thought possible in minutes per day. Um, to live the, the life of your dreams, to experience the abundance of your dreams. <clears throat> it's, it's so interesting. And he says, um, his whole point in this think and grow rich, your thoughts have the ability to produce abundance. Your thoughts have the ability to produce lack. Your prayers are being answered perfectly all the time, guys, because prayer is what you're intimate face to face with all day long. What do you, how do you see yourself? How, what are you enjoying? So again, it's, it's pretty simple thing. So what I'm doing with my kids, which I thought would be great for all of you guys is really, what do you want to experience in life? Um, write it down. I want to have this. I want to do these things. I want to have all of this. All right, cool. What emotions are you going to be feeling? It, you'll, you'll feel peace. You'll feel, uh, it'll all be fruits of the spirit. It'll be, um, you feel successful. You feel so much joy. You feel, you feel so much pleasure. Um, it feels so wonderful. 
to to be all these things and feel all these things. And then what's interesting is uh, when you get into alpha and theta, as a man thinketh in his heart, the lev, those seeds are cast within your heart, just like a seed is cast into the, the earth. They use parables to show what, what the kingdom of God is like. And I've, I've talked about this all the time, but I can never get my arms. I, I, a lot of times, I, I, the more I share it with people, they, they're like, what are you talking about? I was like, have you ever sat down and thought about it? How in the world, if I cast a, uh, Bear's got some tomato plants in his garden that are huge, or tomatoes all over it. If you ever looked at a tomato seed, they're not very big. How does that thing that appears to be dead, it appears to be lifeless, have the power of God in it? Somehow when that seed is cast into the soil in that secret place, because you can't see it, it literally draws everything it needs. It draws the nutrients, the, the right minerals, not only produce one seed, but a harvest of more life of the same thing. And he says, your heart is the soil. That's the parable. So your heart, just like a seed cast in the ground, whatever you tell it has the ability, just like a seed, to draw from all 7 billion people in the world to bring those things to you, to bring the right opportunities to you, to bring this to you, bring that to you. Just like Steve Jobs was saying, he goes, somehow follow your heart. Most of the time, people don't believe their heart. They don't believe that it'll effortlessly produce that because they've been taught matter pushing matter. You better do these things. You better go to school and do this things. You better go do all this stuff. You're really just prolonging your success guys. That's all you're doing. You could have anything you want. Like he just goes, follow your heart. Somehow, you know, it knows where you want to go and where you're going to end up. Why? Because you're, you're the true seed of you guys is from eternity. It's from God himself, the spirit realm within you. It's the eternal spirit of God. Your true nature is God himself. The, 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 the eternal spirit within you, that's uniquely you. It knows because it's seen your life. It's, if, if it's the eternal spirit of God, it knows everything, beginning, past, everything. There's no time in God. So it says, you know what? I know who you are, Jane Doe. And this is why I'm incarnating myself, coming down, descending into you so we can learn how to go experience these things. And I, God became man so that man can experience being God. That's how the writers of scripture wrote. You descended into yourself so you could experience being God. So your heart already knows what, what the dream life is for you because that's why you were here is what it says. So follow that. So meaning that don't, don't try to figure out how you're going to get there. It's ends goals versus means goals. Means goals is you must do all these things physically in order to get it. Ends goals is I see myself already enjoying that. I see myself already being that person. And if it needs to go to college, you will. If you don't, you won't. But that has nothing to do with it. Just follow your heart. Follow where you think you need to go. But I promise you, the heart knows how to bring it to you, just like a seed, the right people, the right places, the right things, as if it's already real. And soon you'll find yourself already enjoying it effortlessly, like it started to happen effortlessly in your life. That is access and higher power so you can do things on minutes a day. And uh, it's really it's really the heart within you, the planting the seeds of life within you that you want to experience. So anyway, hopefully, hopefully that helps guys. Um, the next two uh, house fellowships we're going to do are going to be, like I got to tell you this weekend's Labor Day. So we're not going to do it here. It'll be, I'll publish this in a, in a Facebook post um, and an email as well. So it won't be this weekend, which is September 3. It'll be the 10th, September 10, Saturday, September 10. And then um, October 1. So there'll be two weeks in there to where, where we're gone, but we'll do in, in a span of 30 days, we'll do two house fellowships. So September 10 and October 1 will be the next house fellowship. So hopefully that helps guys. You all have access to this higher power, which is the Lev, the God within you. And it, it'll give you the life of your dreams. It produces like nobody's business, just as all these, uh, uh, whether it's Steve Jobs, whether it's, whether it's Andrew Carnegie says, you know what? I had a fifth grade education. Edison had three months of education, but they learned how to tap into God within and God within can do anything and is there to serve you.